Hello and welcome to today's video. I want to give a huge shout out to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video, which we will discuss more on later. For the eyes, what I'm going to be using is polymer clay, which is the Sculpey Living Doll. Regular acrylic paint, so any acrylic paint will work. And I will also be using two-part epoxy resin. I like to use art resin. Then we're going to begin by taking out the aluminum foil which we put in at the very beginning. When you take it out, it's just going to be a little bit more delicate. So what I like to do is just be gentle. You can actually reuse this. Essentially what we're trying to do is see the skin here? We're trying to dig that out. In order to dig it out, we're going to use an X-Acto knife. So you're going to want to be extremely careful. Do not do this if you are underage. Taking a look at what side it'll be on. So looks like the eye ends up being right about here. So when you're working on this side of the eye, you just want to make sure that you're very gentle so you don't take off any of the eyelid that you worked so hard to get, right? So we finally, after jabbing it through, on this side, we're able to see that the razor finally went through right about here. So we know now we're just going to keep working around that area with all the patience in the world. I reapplied some of the aluminum foil to there just to make it a little more structurally sound and to make sure that as we're doing this process we're not going to break through. I've broken through from one side to the other so from here we're going to try to hollow out the eyes a bit. I think if I was to do this again I would try to find maybe some wooden balls, aluminum foil around that and just put them where the eyes would be and then it'll make it easier to remove. So here what I did is I just rounded out inward here at the bottom part, I kind of made it go down an angle, and then here I made it go up an angle. And then where the tear duct is, I just stopped there because I wanted to keep the tear ducts intact. Doing the same exact thing on the other side. So we can begin to actually make the eyes. So, I take the same polymer clay as before, which is the Sculpey Living Doll. Condition it, just roll it into a little bit of a Ball. Now this part, sometimes it requires a couple of tries. We're going to insert it from behind and push down the top and the bottom. I have to hollow out a little more. It's a little too thick at the top and a little too thick at the bottom. Just gently. Okay. We can check it again and push it in. So we're just going to keep that in there. And we're going to work the other side and do pretty much the same exact thing on the other side. So what I'm doing is I'm just taking the back of this pencil. And if you've made it too, too big or too small, you might have to resize it. And I'm making a pupil in the same size that I see in the reference picture. Now we're going to do the same thing to the other side. You want to make sure the sides are smooth. There's no weird wonky edges which I have here, so I'm just trying to smooth that out. So here what I'm doing is where the lip of the eyelid would be, I'm just kind of like taking off a tiny bit of the clay and cleaning it up. You wanna make sure it doesn't look cross-eyed. If necessary, take a picture with your phone. When you are happy, we're gonna keep them in the face structure. So I'm just gonna keep this here, 275. The thickness, a half an inch, 30 minutes in the oven. We don't want to overdo it in the oven because he is baked already. I have the piece, we have the eyes baked on. He's returned to room temperature. So I found a picture online that is very clear. I can see his eye up close in pretty high resolution detail. So having a good picture of the eye color. And we're gonna go ahead and set up our palette here. Some white paint there, some cerulean blue hue. Now to tone down the blue, we're going to want to get the opposite color on the color wheel. Some orange, some red. I use alizarin crimson for the veins. And to get the dark color, I'm just going to put a little bit of ivory black. Okay, and once again, we're going to start with the white part of the eye. So we're going to take now the white of the eye isn't entirely too white. It has a little bit of pigment in it. 
Usually the whites of the eyes have a little bit of pink, maybe a tiny bit of blue. And if you paint the eyelashes, that's completely fine. We can always fix that later. I'm just mixing up a little tiny pinkish red color. Make sure your paintbrush is at a tiny little tip. And we're just going to create tiny, tiny little paints. What I'm going to start with here is a bit of a toned down grayish blue. The outside of your iris kind of lightly fades into the white. Bring it back over to the other side using the water to keep the paint really fluid. Now I'm mixing this grayish color with some white and we're gonna make that border a little bit more blurred. We are going to make the blue that's within the eye. So we're gonna take that same neutral color, lightly blend the colors because there's no hard lines. Really analyze those colors. I like to be really close to the painting as I work. Now time to make the pupil. So we're going to take some of the black paint. If you wanted to make it not so purely black, sometimes you can add a little bit of red or some burnt umber. The pupil is a perfect circle, so you want to be very light with the touch. Make the pupil look really realistic. The pupil his pupil in particular looks like it blends outwards, so we're going to make that deep blue color on the outer band of the pupil. Now in the picture, I see tiny little flecks that look a little bit reddish blue, so I'm just mixing that limserine crimson with that deep color. So you're just layering colors as you see fit. Or the iris looks a little bit too big, both the left and the right corner, so we're going to just bring it in. Now time to do the right eye. Now here what I'm doing is I'm taking a lot of water and a little bit of alizarin crimson and I am doing a light glaze over the eyes. And this is just neutralizing it so it's not so intense of a blue. And I'm realizing that the whites of his eyes are too intense. I'm just gonna go ahead and make a blue glaze. So thinning out the blue acrylic paint. And we're just gonna go over the eyes. So now I'm taking a very light glaze of that alizarin crimson. Now here I am just carrying the iris up to the top. And I'm kind of using this paint's gray to give the illusion of the shape of the eye that I see in the reference picture. So here it appears that the iris comes up a little bit more. So I'm actually painting on the lid with the paint's gray. And it's just opening up his eye. Look a little closer to what I see in the reference. I wanted to do some more detailing and adding these lighter blue splotches and then you can use your brush to just lightly blur out the corners. So we're just going to go ahead and do that waterline, fix up any little mistakes with a very light brown and alizarin crimson mix and then I'm just going to go ahead and paint those lashes that got painted a lighter very 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 softly glazing that brown over the blue. Once you know 100% that you like how the pupils and the irises look, then we can get the resin ready. So first, you're just gonna wanna make sure that your sculpture is on a flat surface. So here we have our two-part art resin. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to mix up a tiny and I mean like very small amount of both parts so you want to make sure you have two equal parts so I have this little like plastic sleeve to throw away and also if you have like an old paintbrush or an old wooden dowel that would be perfect for mixing it up and I'm also wearing gloves and I'm in a well ventilated area and also note that one will flatten out a lot faster than the other so I just like to keep that in mind and you're going to mix it for a good couple of minutes. This ensures that it will harden too. You don't want it to stay sticky. I'm going to get near the pupil and let it drip into the pupil. And do the same. One bubble. You definitely do not want to put too much because if you put too much on it, it will leak outward and give like a crying effect. And we definitely do not want to make him look like he's crying. A little tear started to form, so we're just going to... Remove the excess with the napkin. I'm just going to pop 
the bubbles using the pin the q-tip to clean up around where it might have settled for 24 hours we're gonna leave them be so this is the finished result of the eye part of the tutorial and in the next part I am just going to be doing a bit of a freestyle spookifying of the sculpture. And now I would like to give a huge thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Squarespace gives people a powerful and beautiful online platform from which to create your website and has a lot of wonderful features such as beautiful award-winning designer templates. I've been using Squarespace for many years now and I love how my website looks. I think it allows me to display pictures exactly how I want to on my website. It's an all-in-one platform, which is wonderful because you don't have to install, patch, or upgrade anything ever. Go to squarespace.com slash shoemakerart to get a free trial and 10% off of your first purchase. Other than that, I hope that you guys had a wonderful time watching this video and I will see you guys on the next one.